All right. Hello and welcome. My name is Ben, and this is part five in a series in which we implement a DSL for UI testing in Rust. Um, if you haven't seen the videos before this, I highly recommend you go back and watch them. Um, in the last video, we got the basics of a parser setup. Um, in this video, we have, fet we have set the fairly lofty goal of finishing said parser. Um, and for the first time since beginning this series, I have actually made some notes as to what we want to accomplish in the video. So, without further ado, I'll get started. So, um, basically the idea is we want to get we want to get the parser to a state where it makes sense to start working on an interpreter, but we have to do a few things. Um, we have to um, support if-then syntax, which we don't do yet. Um, we have to add variable declaration and instantiation, which we haven't really added yet. We have this concept of a um, uh, a read to command which will read the text of um, an element to a variable but we don't have a way to just declare a variable ourselves tell it what it should be ourselves um, we have to add error handling we have no error handling so far um, and then I've also written down quite a few different refactorings I'd like to do so I'm gonna start at the top actually um, with comments um, so right now we don't have a syntax for comments. And so what I think I'd like to do is add them, add comments. Um, we're gonna try and do it um, sort of like in, in Python where um, a pound sign or a hashtag, whatever you, whatever you like to call it, um, tic-tac-toe board, whatever, that's gonna be a comment. Um, so let's do that first. So I think we can actually do this in the scanner. So if we look at the if we look at the scan function, right, it goes ahead and splits the um, it goes ahead and splits the source code into lines. Um, so I figure we'll just add support for line comments. Um, and we'll add a sort of a, a comment token. Um, and if we really, we don't even have to do that. So what we can do, so you'll notice here we have, we split it into lines and then we increment the line we're on, right? And then we split, we split the line by white space. Um, but I think what we can do ahead of time is we can just say skip the line if it's a comment and we can say if um, we'll say if statement and we call this statement it's not a statement yet but basically we know that that line is eventually going to end up a statement. We can say if statement dot starts with, that'll be the easiest way to do this. If it starts with a pound sign, then we can just continue, right? We'll go to the, uh, we'll go to the next line. We'll just skip that line. So let's test that. So you, you may remember previously, um, we before we started printing out the syntax tree, we just printed out the list of tokens. So back in lib, let's comment this out. And let's say for token and tokens.iter. Let's debug print the token. And then what we'll do is in our 
scratch file, I've added a little bit of syntax here. Let's try adding some comments. So we could say, um, fill in username, and then we'll have a comment, fill in password, and then we'll have a comment, handle errors, right? So we fill in the username, we fill in the password, and then if there was an error, we report it, we refresh the page, and we try again. Um, let's see if these comments, if any of these comments come out as tokens or if they get successfully skipped. So we have the variable, so our first token is, ah, so this is interesting. Um, so on line one, um, because it's an empty line, we're parsing it as some variable. The variable relates to an empty string. So that's a bug we've discovered we can handle. But then we get end of line, and then for the next line, we get now on line on line three we get um, the locate and then we get our string username and then we get the and token and then we get the type token and then we get the string test at test.com then we get the end of line and then line four we have an end of line and we have that um, we have that weird variable bug and then on line six we start with our uh, with our locate so it looks like our our comment solution is working but we actually have to deal with these empty lines so I'm glad we checked that um, let's go into scanner and let's say or just white space. How about that? Or or statement dot trim. Is there a way to say is white space? I probably want to say um, we'll just trim it say dot is empty, right? That's effectively the same thing, right? So when trim um, will strip white space from the left and right side of a string, um, and since there's nothing in this line, then presumably if, if we trim it, then it will be empty. Um, and this particular version of trim does not edit itself, it just returns a trimmed version. Um, and for some reason, in, in some standard libraries, trim doesn't return anything it, it trims the string it's operating on but you can see from the signature here it only takes an and self so it's not even it's not allowed to edit what it's operating on gotta love that gotta love seeing that access okay let's try that let's see if that works okay how are we doing looking good so on for our scratch, we start on our first token is on line three. It's the locate token. And then we have the string username, and then we have the and token, and then we have um, the type token, and then we have the string test at test.com, and then we have an end of line, and then the next token that we scan is on line six, right? So we go from line three to line six top notch and then we do the rest of that and then we go to line nine right yeah that looks good all right good work team so that's going to be
checked off. We've added comments and fixed a bug in the process. We handled um, empty lines. Okay, parser current token. Okay, so we're going to do some refactoring in the parser now. So let's look here. So this is basically, um, I want to do a little extract method um, refactoring. So we use this, um, we have these two variables. We have this current line, which is the statement we're operating on. And then we have um, the poorly named current token, which is actually an index um, to the token we're currently operating on. So let's add a function. called current token and what I think I want to do is return an option and token um, and then this where'd we go so here's a version of it, right? Here's where we're we're getting the current token by saying we take the current line that we're operating on and we try to index with that current token index, um, and that's returning the correct type. So this get returns an option with a reference to the token. Um, now. You may be thinking if, if you're going to want the token, you, you might as well clone it here. Um, we could do something like like um, that, where we go ahead and return a token. Um, but I don't think we always. I think there are going to there's going to be a case where we're going to use this, and we're not necessarily going to need to clone the token. We're just going to need the reference to it. So I'm not going to do that. Okay, so now what we probably want to do is find the places where we use that and replace it with current token. So let's replace that with self dot current token. So there, there, there. Okay. So what do we have here? Can it assign self because it is borrowed to occurs here? So here what we're trying to do is, okay. So we have this, we have a reference to the token. So apparently here, we're borrowing this U size. XI. Can I do that? Type U size, can I, yeah. Not assigned to self dot current token because it is borrowed. Self dot current token is borrowed. This is a U size. Let's rename this. Let's call this index. So this should be done executing. So it really shouldn't. Really shouldn't be holding on to that. Maybe we can do. Um, 
that climate there. This is still an ant token. Okay. Um, I can. on the token like that. Oh, here we go. Okay. Okay. Remember all that stuff I said earlier about not cloning the token when we don't have to? Um, the token's cheap to clone. Let's do it the easy way. All right. Turn a token. Awesome. Okay. So we should be good to go there. What I want to do now is go back to um, go back to printing the AST. Make sure that's working. So let's stop doing that. Let's do that. How we doing? Good. Okay, so we, we had errors before. We didn't create those, but we're getting the um, we are getting the syntax tree, which goes to yeah, we're getting the locate username and test.com, and we're getting the the password and this, um, and we're not getting we're not getting this third line because we haven't added support for if then yet. Cool. So we have a current token method. Now what we want to do is we want to remove the advance on or error method. So um, we added this method earlier, advance on or error. And basically the idea was um, we had a method called advance on that would do a look ahead, and if it was the token type we were looking for, we would consume it. Um, and this method basically does the same thing. I mean, it, it's a copy-paste situation. The only difference is it returns a result instead of an option. So we, we just want to be able to produce an error out of it. But we don't actually need a separate method for that because we're returning an, an option so we can do this instead. So when we delete that, we can say, OK, or. Right? Self dot advance on. Yeah, so the, the OK or method. Um, is a method on option that basically allows you to upgrade an option to a result. So an, an option is this enum that lets you say either you have something or you don't. Um, and a result is an enum that lets you say either you successfully got something or you produce some kind of error. And so OK or lets you take an option and say, hey, if I didn't get anything, then it should be this kind of error. And then that way you upgrade from option to result. So we can just do that and save ourselves maintaining the method. OK, or right, and then we can do that, and we can do that. See if that worked. Awesome. Okay, that saves us some room. Now what do we want to do? Okay, we want to implement partial eek for token type and remove fields. So what's going to happen next is in the scanner, we made a we made a decision, right? 
um, previously token type, the string and the variable variants um, contained the, the, the associated string literal and the um, string for the variable name. Um, but we removed those and instead placed them here um, so that we could compare token types um, with our sort of der derived partial eek. Um, we made that choice because we thought it would be the clearer one, um, and I've changed my mind about that. Um, I think we should do it the other way. Um, so that's what we're going to do. I don't like having this sort of... I think it's always sort of an anti-pattern when you're using options to describe what are really enumerations, right? So what's going on here is that a token can either be a string literal or it can be a variable, but it can't be both, right? And this, this layout of options lets it be both. So it, it's sort of, we have a type that can exist in an invalid state. And we don't want to do that. So let's not do it. So let's go back to the old way. So what we're going to do, yeah, impl partial leak for token type and remove fields. So what we want to do is remove these and instead go back to on variable. It has a string. And we can say the associated string is the variable name. Um, and then on string, that can have a string. And then we'll say the associated string is the string literal. Okay, now because of that, um, this is no longer copy. And we don't want to simply derive partial eek on it because what that's going to do is that's going to look for these, for the string variant to contain the same string or the variable variant to contain the same string. But we don't really, when we're talking about a token type, all we really care about is are they the same variant? Um, so we're going to implement this manually rather than derive it so that we can sort of override it. It's, it's basically an operator overload. So let's impl partial leak for token type. And let's have VS Code tell us what we need to do. Okay, so we need to implement this, this function called eek. Okay, and this is really interesting. Um, we've gotten this sort of default autofill. So look at what it's doing um, because it actually contains what we want to do. So it's saying match self and other. And if it's a string type on both sides, then the, str the contained string needs to be the same. If it's a variable type on both sides, then the contained variable needs to, then the contained string needs to be the same. Otherwise, otherwise, we match the discriminant, right? And in the context of an enum, discriminant has a lot of different meanings. Um, you know, it, it has a specific meaning in mathematics and it has a specific meaning in, in English grammar. Um, but in the context of an enum, the discriminant is basically, um, you're, you're saying what kind of variant it is. Um, you're saying, like, if would be a discriminant, right? So what we actually want to do is just this. We just want to compare the discriminants. Yeah. Yeah, so if we read the, yeah, if you read the documentation, it says this can be used to compare enums that carry data while disregarding the actual data. Um, they use standard mem rather than core mem. We might as well too. 
Um, off the top of my head, I don't really, I don't really know what the advantage would be either way. But we'll use standard mem. Sure. Okay. And now because this is Rust, we don't really have to worry that we've broken everything because the compiler will tell us what to fix. Isn't that great? So let's just scroll down to where it's angry. Okay, so we have these um, we have these constructor methods, right, that we were using before, and basically they would um, they would construct the token for you. And I think we just don't need them anymore. I think what we need now is just a token method, and that will. Right, this is what we had um, before we made this change, where basically it just adds the context of the situation, and for us the only context we need is the line number. Um, it's good to have this method because we might add more context later on. Um, but for right now, that's, that's all we really care about. And now we just need to replace this. So here we have, let's do self.token, and give it, A token type variable with the word, right? If we get, oh wait, is that what we were doing? What was that method? It says variable token. Oh yeah, this is the very end. Okay, I th for a second I thought we were in this in quotes. Yeah, so let's do self.token token type variable with the word. Great. Um, here we're trying to add a string literal with the result. So let's just say token. Token type. and we give it result right yeah how about up here I'm trying to add a string literal with all this stuff okay let's add it strange self dot token token type string with all that goodness. Maybe get rid of one of those. Um, let's clean this up while we're here. Let's, we've got a block. We've got a block that we can do work in. So let's actually Let word equal that, right? This is basically us stripping the quotes and then we'll just give it word. Yeah. Um, I think I'm still okay with these unwraps. We may want to, when we get when we get real proper error handling, um, we may want to have a concept of an internal error, um, and then we would take those unwraps and we would turn them into some kind of internal error, um, like like represent an error that we know is the compiler's fault and, and not, or the the interpreter's fault and not the user's fault. Okay, yeah, let's go with that. And then in the parser, 
Okay. So here, so here's the deal. Um, advance on still works. And the reason advance on still works is because what we're doing is we're comparing token types, right? We're comparing the token type of the current token to the provided token type. And what we did in scanner was we basically did an operator overload on double equals. So now double equals won't compare what's inside here. It will just compare these. The problem we're running into is in the part in the parser, we have to provide it a token type to compare against. But for these variants to even exist, they have to have some value. So let's just give them a value. Um, this value doesn't matter. It's still, we'll, we'll, we'll go with this for now. Um, not applicable, right? Not too owned. We'll go with that and then we'll find a more elegant solution around that. Right, okay, and that's still working. Is it still working? Okay, so what happened here? So we have our errors, right? We have token type variable. I think we're getting everything. Yeah, we get locate username and type test at test.com and then we get locate password and, and then we get um, type then we get the password and then not right and then this errors out because of the because uh, we don't have if then syntax what did we get before that was so darn long I don't know so here we get locate username and oh it just it printed longer because token used to be a longer thing okay cool so we're still going great impl partially for token type and remove fields nice and I think it's um, I think that's We'll, we'll do something to fix that sort of weird, not applicable constructor. Um, and I think it's worth it to keep tokens simple. Okay, now what we wanna do is we're gonna implement a method on the token type, on, not on, on token type, on token, um, for producing an error. Basically, um, we want to use the token as, um, as context for an error. Um, and we could do this two ways. We could create a method in the parser called error and it would take a token and it would use the information on that token um, to produce an error. But I think, I think what I'd rather do instead is just implement it on token and I know that seems weird because you would think you would think an error belongs to the parser but hear me out let's let's see how this syntax turns out 
So on token, I'm going to impl, just do our own method token. And we'll say pub function error. It's going to take an and cell. It's going to return a string. Um, we are we are halfway implementing error handling in this video. What we're going to be implementing in this video is basically stringly typed errors. Um, passing, you know, bubbling up a string that tells us what went wrong in each error scenario. Um, that's a bad idea. Don't do that in production code. We're doing it as a way to, as like a stepping stone. Um, what you want to do almost always um, is have custom error types. Have an enum that describes all the error states that your application can encounter. Um, and then derive, sta derive the standard error error trait for it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, use that. Um, and there are two crates, both by um, David Tolnet, um, the guy who made um, Sin and Quote, um, just like a prolific Rust programmer. Um, one is called This Error, and one is called Anyhow. And they work really well together, and they're really great. So check them out. Um, we're gonna do we're gonna do the crappy error handling right now, and then make it better later. So basically, what we want to do is we want to produce an error message that want to produce an error message that uses the token as context. And I think the way we're going to do that is we're going to take in something that can be displayed. Yeah. And we'll call this message. Right? Um, if that confused you, this is a generic function. Um, what we're doing is we could take we could take string, right? Um, or we could take answer, um, or we could take as ref answer. Um, but I think what I want to take right this moment anyway is basically anything that implements display. Um, this impl is short for it's short for this. Right, we're saying take takes any type T so long as T implements standard format display. Okay. And let's return a string that looks like this. We want line what have you and then we want the error message right self dot line message um hmm. I think we're going to do one more thing here. Um, I think we want to do, I think I want to implement display for token. Um, and this is going to be our equivalent of storing the, the lexeme of the token. So let's impl standard format display for token. Tell me what to do. Right, um, let's match self um, dot token type. And then we'll do 
fill that out. If it's locate, uh, let's do um, let's lexeme equal match shelf dot token type, right? And then we'll write the lexeme. This is a macro. There we go. Um, so that's basically what we want to do. Um, for locate, the token is locate. Now we could store this um, when we scan it in, um, but I don't really, because we do have this sort of, we have this down here, right? I don't really want to deal. Every time I construct a token, I don't want to. I don't want to deal with that. Um, well, yeah. I think let's just implement display. Type token is type. Click the token is click. Port the token is. Ports, fresh, try again, screenshots, Add error. Um, okay, if it's a string, we want to return a reference to that string. Doesn't live long enough. Gosh, dead gummit. You know what we have to do now? We've got to return the string, and we've got to turn all of these into strings with dot two owns. There we go. Dot move out of self dot token type as enum variant string. Oh, and then we'll clone this. Right. Um, just behind a shared reference. What is your deal? What the consider oh. Yeah. Wait, so that's an AND string. Can I just return S? Yeah, but does it live long enough? Oh, it sure does, doesn't it? Look at that. OK, you know what? Let's. Do that, and then let's do that. Hey, look at that. Much cleaner. Okay. If it's an if statement, it's just if. It's then. It's then. It's and it's and. If it's a variable, v, then let's return that v. And that's, that's a string, but it's the variable name. And if it's an end of file, we'll just call it EOF. And if it's an end of line, we'll call it EOL. Great, I like that. Um, so now we can display print tokens. And so 
for our error message, we don't simply say the line. Um, we can say error at blah, colon blah. And then we can give it the token type. Or really, we can give it self, right? Because we implemented that on token. Why did we implement that on token? That's for token type. That's displaying a token type. Let's do that. Let's do this on token type. Match on self. And do token type. Beautimus. Okay, so now presumably when when we want to error based on a token, we can just call this error method on that token and it will return us the string that the string of the error message we want to produce. So say we had an error on line three. Um, with an out of place and token and we said token is not expected here. This would say line three error at and token not expected here, right? Our error message would probably be better than that but you, you see what we're saying. Um, okay, let's run this. Still doing great. Let's, All right, so we did that. And now what we wanna do is start having some errors. They're not great errors because they're just strings, but at least they'll tell us what's going on. All right, so let's go into the parser and let's look at where we print errors. So here, instead of printing, whoa there partner, We'll print the error. And then for this, let's return a string. Yeah. Um, in parse command, it's going to return a string. And then, yeah. Okay, so here where we have an error, what we want to do is actually error on, right, if, if the advance doesn't work properly, right, if, if the advance doesn't go but we expect it to go, what we're going to do is we're going to produce an error from the current token. So here, what we're trying to do is we've done a locate command right and we expect to find a string after it now we need to correct this because we should also be able to pass it a variable um, but you could say what we could say is self dot current token dot error and then we'll give it a message uh, no method named error found on token. There is a method named error found on token. On option. Okay. Self dot current token. Ooh. Okay. So current token gives us an option. We really ought to know if there's no tokens left. So in parse, we split on the end of line tokens. We set the current line. If current token is an end of line, we break. 
Okay, so this early break is supposed to be for end of file. Hmm. Right, so the idea being that we split on the end of line tokens. Um, and the first thing we want to do is we want to check, are we at the end of the file? Because then we need to break. And then, then we parse a statement. Um, what that means is, is that we're never going to, we're never going to call current token when there's no tokens, right? The, the tokens that get passed to parse should presumably all, always have at least the end of file there. Um, and we can actually, we can probably do something like assert tokens.len is greater than or equal to or we'll say it's greater than zero and and tokens dot last dot to dot unwrap um, dot token type equals equals token type end of file right so the idea here is a vec a token list passed to the parser should always end in an end of file token, right? So the um, we check that the length is greater than zero first of all because we don't want to be passing an empty an empty list, and then we check that um, the last token in the vec. Um, is an end of file token and it's that unwrap is safe because we checked the len and the the um, and would short circuit so if the len was zero then um, we wouldn't call the second half of that of that um, and statement um, but we'll write that there anyway the unwrap is safe because we checked when it's greater than zero. Okay. And let's just just to um, just to confirm all that, let's get this fixed. Um, because we know that we're never going to call um, current token on an empty Vec, I think, I think we can unwrap. Well, not, not advance on, well, I guess advance on any would be I think we can call unwrap and then we can return token and then here we don't have to check if there's a new current token we know there will be one so instead we can say if self dot current token dot token type right otherwise we're gonna have 
none. And we'll just say self.current token. Right, these things are fairly cheap to clone. I'm not really worried about it right now. Um, and here we go. If self.current token uh, token type is in the file, break. Yeah, and then we're back to just these errors. Okay, so now let's do this. Now let's say self.currenttoken.error expected string or expected text. Right? And then here we can say pretty much the same thing. And then here we can say the same thing. And then here we're expecting a variable. So we'll say expected variable, right? And then here, um, we're erroring because we expected a command. So we'll say self dot um, current token dot error expected command right and then here um, this else is unreachable right because advance on any also should always return a token shouldn't it so let's do that um, so advance on any should always return a token because there should always be a current token so let's do dot unwrap Yeah, so then here we have we'll just call this else and we'll match self dot advance on any dot token type. And we don't have to have that. We'll just call this else. Yeah. Okay. Let's see what's up. God. All right. Where'd it happen? 134. What's your deal? Current token. Unwrap on a. Unwrap on a nun value. Hmm. Now listen, you're supposed to be safe. We've gotten in the file, so we split on the end of line. UF, break. And that should, let's statements not clear statements. So it's not getting to the end. I wonder if it's the if then statement. Let's comment this out. Okay, so it's not that. What's our problem? What's our problem? We are in the line. T 
So we can start the last stuff from that. Four lines of two can start the equals equals. So self.index gets reset to zero at the end. Let's let's display the backtrace. Rust. Backtrace equals one. Oh, I'm silly. I know how environment variables work, right? export. I thought I could just run it. Okay, whatever. Um, current token. So four line and tokens dot split. It's called Marsh Command. It's not advance on any. It's probably from advance on where it's I thought I was being videoed there for a second. Um, we're doing this to ourselves. It's one of these. Right. So 
So when might we call? We'd locate that. Get that. So each line will start correctly. So well, wait a minute. Let's print the tokens we're sending. So we send Yeah, let's just print the token type. So we have we have a locate, a username, and type test at test.com. And then end of line, locate password and type the password, end of line, and file. So when we pass this to, we pass these tokens to parser, here's what happens. We assert that the tokens.lan is greater than zero and the last one is an end of file. We pass that. We split on the end of lines. We split here and we split here. Um, for the first one, the current token should be locate. Um, and that's not an end of file token, so we don't break. Then we call parse statement. In parse statement we parse command for the left hand side that's going to advance on locate um, and then it's going to get the string username token right and there is a current token there so these are safe because advance on would panic before this panicked okay um, Okay, so that should return okay command locator. And then if let's some um, and token self.advance on token type and okay, so we get the and token. Um, then we get the right hand side side and that calls parse statement. And so that's going to parse type as the left hand side. Um, and parse command is going to parse type and test at test.com, right? And the, oh, there we go. And then advance on, advance on and is going to look for another and, and that's going to call current token, but there's no more current tokens. So if we go to advance on this is the this is the called current token that's causing the panic. So if we we can say
Okay, so we can do we can do the check here and then return none. But I don't think it's w worth it necessarily. Maybe it is. Um cuz up here right, we need the current token. Well, there's no guarantee, right? We don't want the parser to panic if someone types locate and then no following string. So yeah, we we, sh we shouldn't unwrap. We shouldn't be unwrapping. All right, decision made. This is an option token. Okay, so. This needs to be like it was before. If let some token equals self dot current token, and if token type of that token is matching, then we want to return the token, right? Otherwise, we return none. Great. And if self dot current token dot unwrap dot token type, right? This unwrap is safe because we literally just checked um, to make sure that. It would not be an empty vec that was passed in. Um, well, I guess this is. Right, you could theoretically. You could pass in an end of line, end of file. And would that have an empty vec followed by an end of file, or would that just have. I don't, I don't see how we would do that. Okay. Now let's fix these. So... Let's do... We have two different errors that these situations can produce, basically. Um, if the... Well, really, the error is the same, isn't it? Because... You, you expected some text there. But... If you get some kind of other token type, then you can produce the error from the token. Hmm. Maybe we should have had a method produced an error from the token. Let's do... Well, really, I guess I want to do there. There, there, there. Crap. There. There and there. Map. If we have a token, then we want to call error on that token.
and then if we didn't get the token we can say unwrap or text and then down here we'll put expected variable right it's the same error it's just we don't have a token to um, perform the error on I guess we could we should probably do it on the previous token then shouldn't we um, yeah, so let's have a method called previous token. Let's have this. Let's do self dot index minus one. Let's um, have this return a token. Let's unwrap it. Let's add some panics um, documentation. index is more than is greater than um, self dot current line dot len right but the idea is we'll only call it when we know um, only call it when we know there's a previous token so only call you no know, there was a previous token and we know that because to go down any of these branches we had to advance on a token um, and oh, we don't even have to call um, previous token because we can get the token out of advance on so never mind goodbye panicking method right we can take that and we can call them token right and then we can call token dot error on the previous token and then whoo are we having fun yet good lord okay let's fix these two um, self dot advance on any returns a token um, so we'll call this token and we'll just call error on it All right for token type oh. right 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 um, let token equals self dot advance on any and then we'll do 
token. token dot token type and we'll say else we'll just call token dot error hey look at that okay so let's do let's do in lib done printing out tokens let's print out the syntax tree again and let's see what we get Um, we got we got a statement. Look at that. Um, we got we got the two we got the two statements and no errors. Woohoo! And then we should get an error if we uncomment that. Yeah. So it says you can see this is what the error is going to print. It says line nine error at if expected command. We haven't we haven't added. Um, support for the if then syntax yet. Um, so it's saying, hey, at, right here, I expected a command, and it's telling us the line, it's telling us what the token looks like, um, and it's telling us what the error is. Yes, good work. Woo. Okay, where are we at? We're at 121. Let's keep it going. So we now have. We have implemented stringly typed errors, right? Awesome, good stuff. We will replace those with real errors soon. Replace token with command param in command. Okay. First of all, let's go here. Let's run cargo format. Okay, this is just a lot. So we're going to probably do, we're gonna refactor that. So what's going on here? Um, if we advance on, ooh, something broke there with this um, <laughs> with this type hinting. Oh, there used to there's a way to turn this off. I hate these little gray type hints. Um, Rust analyzer turn off type. It's control plus rust analyzer inlay. Yeah. Um, rust analyzer inlay. Chaining hints. Will those show inlay type hints for binding modes? Turn method chains. Turn it off. Closing whether to show inlay hints after closing which turn it off. I don't want any of your hints. Function parameter name inlay hints at the call site. I do like that actually. Um Okay, let's see how that looks. Much better, much better. So we have, we just have the, um, we have the hints for the function names. So it's it's sort of like having um, named parameter named parameters. Okay, I'm fine with that. Um, how do we want to refactor this? So basically, what we're doing in each of these is we're saying. Also, we need to fix the bug we entered. But if we if we advance on a locate, then we should be provided with a locator, right? Um, and that should be a string. Otherwise, um, we need to produce an error. What we're going to do is we're going to take the current token, and we're going to error on that current token. Um, produce an error from that context with this message or if we can't use the current token um, then we want to use this token that we found the error on um,
what we probably want to do We could have an error method on the parser that does that. Um, you give it a you give it a message, and it tries to produce the error on the current token. But if there is no current token, then it produces the error on the previous token, um, and that would potentially panic if there was no previous token. But presumably, you would not get somewhere. You can't you can't really advance twice. Um, so you would have to be manually incrementing your current index. So I think that's okay. So let's do this. Let's have function previous token, like we discussed earlier. This time, it, you know, this returns a token. This does basically one, and then we'll say unwrap and then clone, right? Um, and then, yeah, so let's just produce token is never used. Let's go ahead and so we don't forget. Just add panics, add a hashtag panics, um, and we'll we'll come back and describe that. And then let's add a function called error. All right, it's going to take an and self, and it's going to return. This could return the error message, but it could simply return um, an actual result, and then we could bubble that error up. Um, Let's return a message for now, because I think what we'll want to do is we'll want to return the error type, and then we'll give that error type to OK or, and then bubble it up. So let's have it do this. Let's have it return a string, and let's do self dot current token dot map. We'll take the token. Oh, and you can take a um, you can take a message. It's going to be an answer. We'll say t dot error. Ooh. T dot error with the message. Or say unwrap or um, self dot previous token right and that one always returns a token and we'll error on that one with the message yeah okay and then here we can say Okay, or self dot error expected text. Yeah, like that. And then we'll say error expected text. Say expected text, um, but in this one it's actually expected a variable. 
Oh wait, no. Read two is the one that expects a variable. Okay, or um, expected variable, right? And then we're not using these tokens, so instead of desugaring them, or instead of um, not desugaring, destructuring them. Let's just say uh, this sum. Uh, yeah, okay, that should still work. Right, so it parses everything valid, but it gives us the error on the last line. Um, let's see if let's do an okay. We'll spread it out with some comments so it's readable. We can probably combine these as well. So before we were going to have a method um, advance on any of that took a list of tokens and I think that will help clear this up. So let's do that. So let's have a function advance on any of and that's going to take, yep but it's going to be a vector of token types. And we'll say for token type in token types dot iter. Really we can call into iter. If um, self dot advance on token type, we'll say if let some token equals self dot advance on the token type, then we want to return that token. And if we go through all of them and we don't find one, then we just return none. So it's basically the same as advance on, but we can give it multiple um, token types. So instead of typing this three times, right, we can say get rid of that, um, and we need type or report. Right. Um, mm, well, so we can't. Um, we need to know what command to give it. But I tell you what, it might fix our. Um, it might fix our string bug. Okay. So, let's look at where we are. Replace token with command param in command. Okay, so we're actually in the right we're actually in the right place. Um, basically, we have this command. Um, we have this command enum, um, and it represents a command. Um, and what we're doing right now is for the locate command, the type command, and the report command, we're giving it a token. Um, but really, it should be able to take only two things. A string, a string literal, or a variable. 
So I think what we want to do is have a struct command par param that take that could be I, or an enum command param that could be either of those things, um, and then have it take that and then construct that based on what we find. So let's do that. Yeah. So let's do pub enum command param. And there are two things you can give to a param. I mean, to a command. You can give it a string, which is obviously going to have a string associated with it. Or you can give it a variable, which is going to have the string for the um, variable's name associated with it. Um, if you're wondering why we don't just give it a string, um, the idea is that when we get to the interpreter, we're going to need to know which one of those things this is supposed to represent. Um, because we're going, we're going to have to decide whether to execute as is or whether to look up what we're giving it in, um, in our environment um, where we save variables during the runtime. Um, but we don't just want to, yeah, we don't just want to have a default, right? Um, because we want it to be an error if you pass, um, if you try to type a string but you don't put quotes on it. Um, we want we want something without quotes to always be a variable because it think what they you want people to know exactly what they're doing when they're typing. You don't want to have defaults that would come out of a mistake. You want to have defaults that make sense. I don't think that's a default that makes sense. So let's do this. So let's first of all derive all these nice things. And then let's do a command param. Okay. Now, when we construct this nonsense, um, this is let's let's add some comments here. Locate command. And take um, a string or a variable. So let's do try to advance on a string, right? So let's say um, that's trying to advance on a string. And let's just do the, um, let's deal with the option for now. And then let's try to advance on a variable. So we'll say let variable equal self dot advance on token type variable and we have to give it this like So now what we want to do is we want to say match locator variable and basically if we get some token So this is going to return some token, right? So we don't care about the line the token is on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that syntax. 
I think it's two dots. Right? Um, some token type. That token type is going to be a token type string. String, some string S. Can I do that? If it's, um, is it token type like that? Can I? Yeah, I'm trying to destructure my way to that string, which I have. Then we want to return a command of a command of locate with a command param of string with the string. Haha! There we go. command. Oh, I see. Um, we want to wrap that in an OK. Yeah. Woo. What's your deal? Expected option token, option token, found. Oh. Some, and then we don't care about what's on the right hand side, right? Woo! If we instead get some token where the token type is a variable, right? Um, where the with v and that's a that's a string, yeah. Then. Um, we want to do an OK command locate with a command param variable with the variable name V. Right? Yeah. OK. And then, otherwise, that's an error. So what we want to do is we want to return an error and we want to call self.error, self.error. And we'll say we expected um, a variable or some text. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good, folks. I think that I think that did the trick. So yeah, try to advance on, try to advance on a string, try to advance on a variable, and then if. Um, I think that's self-explanatory. Right. Sort of destructuring our way down to the internals of the enum. Okay. Um, let's do the same thing for type. Right. Let's do type. Type expects either some text or a variable. So we want to match the text or variable. We want to say, yeah. Um, but these commands are instead going to be the type command. 
right? Cool. Let's do report. Report expects either some report message as text or a variable. So we'll call this message. And yeah, the only difference here is that the command is going to be report. Usually when you're copy pasting like this, it's a good sign that you can simplify. So we've still got some simplifying to do, but at least we're, we're fixing this, we're fixing this bug. Um, okay, how about self.advance on read to? Um, read to only expects a variable. It has to have a variable. Um, so I think it's actually good. Sweet. So what do we get here? Same. Awesome. Okay, so let's look at um, this, right? I'm going to comment out this if then line, right? And we should get, yeah, so we parse both those lines, both those statements correctly. Um, what we should be able to do now is we don't necessarily have to pass text to locate. We should be able to pass a variable, say a variable called username with no quotes around it. And you can see here it went fine and it says we've got a locate um, we've got a statement it's a locate state it's a locate command on the left hand side with the variable um, and the value of the name of that variable is username and then if I change this to quotes again It says, okay, it's a locate command on the left-hand side, but this time, instead of giving it a variable, I gave it a string, and the value of that string is username. Sweet. Command param done. All right. Implement display for statement. Okay, this is pretty ugly to look at, um, so I think I just want to implement display so that it's easy for us debugging in the future. Probably should have done that earlier, but I knew we were going to change a lot of things. So let's let's do implement display for statement. Um, impl standard format display for statement. I never did an explanation of what this is for um, people who are new to Rust. I don't expect that a ton of non-Rustations are going to watch this. Um, I don't expect that a ton of people are going to watch this. Um, but um, Rust has this concept of traits. Um, they're very similar to interfaces in Java, um, but they're just they're they're more powerful in a few ways. Um, but they're also more um, they're just more prevalent in the language. And I know these days interfaces are everywhere in, in Java. Everything is everything's getting cast by to something else um, but traits are built into the language in a way that runs really really deep um, so for instance um, like op operators all the operators in the language like plus minus divided by all that are syntactical sugar for traits um, for calls to methods um, that are basically implementations of some trait, some interface. Um, so you, they're like the, they're the lifeblood of, of Rust really. Um, and they're fantastic. Um, the trait system in Rust is what, it clicks for you and it, it's just so <laughs> wonderful to use. So um, anyway, that's, that's what I'm doing here. I'm basically implementing an interface for how we would pretty print or, um, you know how how we would print this to the console, or re really write it to a string is is what's going on. So let's do that. Um, when we print a statement, we basically want 
I think the easiest way to do this is going to be to do, say, have the left hand side and then and and then the right hand side. Right, because that's effectively what it is. Um, and then the right hand side should presumably print with the with the following ands. And so now what we need is um, we'll say right hand side dot one, which is going to be that um, this boxed statement. Uh, command. Yeah, so now let's implement standard format display for command. Is it full on command? No, it's CMD. Okay. Let's match self. What do we got going on here? We got the locate. Locate command has an associated command param. So let's do locate with the command param and let's do write. the command param and let's say locate the um, command param yeah and then let's do basically the same thing for all the rest of these commands but with their command word. So this one is type. This one is click. This one is report. This one is refresh. This one is try again. This one is screenshot. This one is had error. And then this one is read two. So effectively what we're doing, we're about to implement command, we're about to implement display for command param. Um, and basically all it's gonna do is, um, it's just gonna, Return the string on the inside, um, and if it's um, if it's a variable, it'll just return the variable name, and if it's a string, it'll put quotes back around it. We're effectively reconstructing the um, the actual way it looks in the script, um, but I don't really want to do that because that's no fun, right? Um, no field one. Uh, we need to. Um, we need to do a match statement here. I don't want to do that, so what I want to do instead is instead of printing the AND keyword, I want to do this with parentheses. I want to say, right, you're, you're calling a command on the result of the previous command and actually It's going to be the right hand side that comes first. Right, just so we can see the, um, 
the actual order in which this gets executed. Um, and what we have to do now is we have to say match self dot right hand side and either it's some tuple with an and token that we don't care about and our statement our right hand side statement in which case we want to produce this right and we just want to have that right hand side statement or oh, it's called statement okay. or if there is no statement on the right hand side we just want to write uh, the left hand side right so that's sort of the terminating kind of thing and then the only thing left to do is impl display. This is going to be worth it, I promise. Command param. And what we're going to do is we're going to match self. And if it's some string, then we want to write. string and if it's um, variable then we want to write the variable and if it's a string we want to put quotes around it right so can I find CP in this Oh. If it's one that takes a command parameter, it gets a command parameter, and then click should just be click, refresh should just be refresh. Try again, should just be, try again, screenshot, should just be screenshot, um, had error, should just be had error, and read to does take a command parameter, token, oh read to still takes a token, let's have read to take a command parameter. There we go, and then what's going on here? Right, okay, we're still passing it the, um, the token. So what we want to do, var equal advance on token type variable. So we know that the token we're advancing on is a variable. Um, but we still have to let's do match variable and this is going to be a token with some token type variable v then we're going to say command Read to command command variable with the v. Otherwise, we want to self dot error expected variable, right? Um, and we need to wrap that in an error. And then we can get rid of that. Cool. Now what's going on up here? Cannot move out of behind a reference. Consider borrowing. Yeah, fine with that. 
there we go. Okay, so now when we run this, it will print um, the statements, but they should look a lot nicer, right? So if I come here, I change this to regular print. Vex statement. Oh, okay. Um, so what we want to do is for statement in, right? So this is not an AST, it's a VEC of statements. So we'll say let statements for statement in statements dot iter. Print line each statement, right? Let's do it. Right, so you can see it's printing the statements now. So I want to show you that we actually have um, have the information we want. So if we look at this scratch pad, the first line is locate username and type test at test.com. So the first thing we do is we call this locate username right and if if that evaluates effectively then that the result of that is what gets executed with type test at test.com see where we're getting at then on the next line we do locate password and if that gets executed effectively the result of that is what gets executed with type password and then you know the, the crazy password with the spaces um, so that's what's going on. Mm. We can print it the normal way. Let's do statement. Let's do and, and let's do the left hand side and then let's do the right hand side. Just so you can see Oh, I typed and with two A's. But just so you can see, we've got it parsed correctly, right? Because it's giving us back, um, it's giving us back the code that we scanned in. It was a little bit of time spent, but I think it was worth it because that's gonna make debugging a lot easier in the future. Okay. Impl display for statement. Awesome. All right. Now, finally, this if-then line. We need to add support for if-then syntax. And all we're gonna do, we're not gonna, this is not, we're not adding to our grammar. If-then is the same as and for our language, right? Because think about how this works. On this, look at this, this first line. We locate username. If that succeeds, then we try to type test at test.com, right? That's what this and does. It's just the only reason it's there, this is not some sort of Boolean operation. The only reason it's there is to short circuit, right? Um, this might as well say, this might as well say um, question mark for popping, for bubbling up an error, right? If this succeeds, then we continue. But if it fails, we bubble up the error. Look at this. If had error, then report error message. If the had error command succeeds, then it will continue. But if it doesn't, then it will bubble up the error message. They are the same. They are the same in, in our language, they are the same. So what we can do is instead of having special a special grammar for an if then statement, we can just Take, recognize when we're reading an if then and pretend it's an and statement. So let's do that. So in the scanner, I'm sorry, in the parser, when we are parsing a statement, right? Parse command, right? We look for the locate keyword, we look for the um, token type keyword, we look for the report keyword, we look for the read to keyword, and then we look for, um, we try to do the rest of these, and then we produce an error if we don't find an expected command. Um, 
but there is one more type that we should consider and honestly we'll just do it at the top let's say if self dot advance on token type if right um, dot is sum and then we'll say bring this up here say else if self dot advance so if we get an if statement then here's what we need to do we need to try and um, we need to try and parse the command between the if and then statement and then um, we need to consume the then or we need to consume the then token and then we need to keep going um, the question is what sort of syntax do we want to allow so we could have something like if had error right this is this is basically the reason we have this is typing had error and is weird it's not human readable and the whole point of this language is that it's human readable so instead we let people type if had error then import error message and refresh and try again we could limit it we could legitimately limit this statement to only being an if had error then statement or we could expand it because theoretically it should operate the same as an and statement right so you might want to have something like if locate username then type test at test.com right um, and so that way you can say um, it makes it I, I actually really like that because um, when you do when you're writing a test you can sort of express two different ideas um, Ooh, that might actually be confusing because if you're coming from a programming background then you can think of that as a separate syntax right right so the idea here is you might want this not to error Right? You might want to be able to type this. You, you might want to be able to look for something that might be there um, and then only perform an operation if it's there. That's a common test requirement. And it's not one we thought about. So what should we do? Should we... Should we support this as a different kind of um, as a different kind of command, or should we find a different way? If had error, then report error message and refresh and try again. It's different. You wouldn't want, right? The idea is that we want to short circuit and throw an error if we run into an and. A 
checking whether or not you had an error should not produce an error. I think we have to support if statements as a separate syntax. We won't support else, but I think we have to include if statements. It feels like a it feels like programming, but I think it's something I think we got to have it. I think we got to have it. So not not have if statements desugar to an and, but in fact have them as their own separate concept because they don't throw an error. Now let me think about this because we were so sure before. So the idea was that this would evaluate to a boolean right it would throw this command would throw an error if it failed but then right that error would be thrown not as a return value but as a side effect we would have a running error reporter and locate username would send an error to the error reporter but then it would just return false in order to short circuit the statement um, in this case, if it said had error and, then the idea is that had error would be a command that would not throw an error, um, that would not be possible of throwing an error. It would simply return the Boolean whether or not we had an error and then it would operate the same. So we would have, so if had error then, could desugar to, to the and because it's effectively doing the same thing. Um, it, it's, it's effectively saying, if this happened, then continue with the rest of the line. But here we have if locate username, then type test.com. This instance of locate username should cause an error. This instance of locate username should not cause an error. Um, and therefore, we have to represent them as different. Okay, yeah. All right. So let's do it, shall we? Let's look at our grammar. We have a statement. And right now, our statement is we can have a command and then we can chain it with the AND operator. We and a command can be one of these things. We could have an if then statement is going to return one of these. It's going to return It should return a statement. How do we want to fit this in? This is interesting. Locate command parameter. Because we can have an if command, right? We can have. Really, I think what we have here are two kinds of statements. We have a command statement and we have an if statement. So let's do this. Let's have pub enum statement, right? And let's have this, well, before we do that, let's rename this command statement. 
right? But we can have pub enum statement, which can be a command statement with a command statement in there. Or it can be an if statement, right? With that if statement in there. And then we have pubstruct if statement, which has to have. Can we have nested ifs? If locate username, then if locate password, then type password. We could do that. I think it's ugly, and I don't see a scenario where that would be useful. Right? I think generally, if you're trying to locate if if an element's present, you want to do some interaction on it. Um, I don't think, I think if you're trying to locate multiple elements, what you're really doing is you're verifying that some elements are in place, and so you would want to use a command statement so that you would cause an error. So I don't think we want to support nested if statements. I think that's too programmery for us. So let's do... So an if statement should be, it should have a command, which is a command statement. And then it should have, basically it should have a condition. That should be a command statement. Because remember, even though these command statements execute and can cause errors, um, they evaluate to a Boolean. And what, what this if statement is effectively going to do is it's going to downgrade the result of that command statement from an error to, to just, a, just a Boolean. Um, right? That's what's going on here. So if we type locate username and, this stands the chance of causing an error. If we type if locate username then, that downgrades the result of that command from something that's fr basically from a result to just an, uh, just a Boolean. And that's probably how we'll implement it. So let's do that. We have a condition, which is a command statement that we have to evaluate. And then we have um, a then branch. Don't really know a better word for it. Um, the branch, and we have to provide a then branch. You have to say what you want to do if that happens. Um, so we'll. Also, that's a command statement. That's always got to be there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's. That's pretty straightforward. So let's add this to both of these. And then let's parse one, right? So we have, if we advance on an if statement, then we want to return 
Um, ooh, return command. But you should return. Should be getting back a statement. So this right now parse returns command statement. But or vec of command statement. We need it to return a vec of statements. Right? And so that means we need parse statement to return a statement, not a command statement. So we're going to say so right now the way parse statement works is it try, basically tries to parse a command statement. So we can rename this actually. Yeah. Let's rename this method parse command statement. Um, and let's keep everything how it is. Right? And then instead of calling what's your deal oh you need to say parse command statement right so everything down there is still good right up here we're saying hey there's no method parse statement we were trying to parse a command statement what we need now is an intermediary pub function parse statement it's going to turn a result statement string and basically what we want to do here is we're going to first check if it's an if statement um, and try then parse the internals of that if statement. Um, and if it's not an if statement, then we'll simply parse the command statement. So let's say if um, self dot advance on token type if Dot is some um, right so if we find an if then we're basically going to self dot parse if statement um, and we'll just return the result of that um, else self dot parse command statement right so if it's a um, what's your deal expected command statement found it's because we renamed it up here so that needs to be statements Okay, yeah, excellent. Um, so command statement returns a result command statement. So we want to take the result there and we're going to basically upgrade it. We're going to map. And if we've got some command statement, then we're going to wrap it in its parent statement command command statement yeah and then we're going to end up doing the same thing with um, if statement so let's do pub function parse if statement and itself and this is going to return um, an if statement Right? And then we can say dot map if we have some if statement, then we can say statement if with that if with that if statement. Yeah. Bravo us. Right? Okay. And then let's parse the if statement. Finally. Um, so we've advanced on we've advanced on the if token. So we've already consumed that. So what we need to do now is we need to consume we need to 
parse the um, the command for the the sort of con the command that serves as the condition. Then we want to um, we want to make sure that we have a then token that follows, um, and then we want to basically parse um, the rest of the line as a command statement. And we can go ahead and default to a command statement because we said we don't really want to support nested ifs. It just it doesn't look right. Um, it's it's too complicated for the language we're trying to expose. So let's do that. Self dot parse. Now, now we run into trouble though, because parse command is recursive, is it not? Is parse? No, I don't think it is actually. It just sort of looks ahead at two tokens, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, top notch. Okay. Let's say let command equal self dot parse command, and then we'll bubble up an error there, right? And then we'll say let then token equal self dot advance on token type then and then we want to error right so we're going to say dot okay or self dot error expected token then We'll say people don't really know the word token. We'll say expected keyword then. Yeah. Right? And then um, and then we'll go ahead and propagate that error. And then we'll say now we want to parse the right hand side as a command statement. So let then branch equals self dot parse command right and then we should be able to return an okay if statement and the condition and then the then branch right and then let's just call this condition, right? So we try to parse uh, which expected command statement found enum command. Oh, we're calling parse command. We need to call parse. Oh, okay. So you know what? An if statement um, doesn't really need a commands, command statement. It needs commands. It's a command for the condition and a command for the then branch, right? It's actually quite quite straightforward. Um, and then yeah, we're good, right? Because parse command, parse command statement is recursive because it tries to traverse the ands. You know, we may need to call command statement at the end if we look at our. Don't worry about that. Um, if we look at our syntax, we could say if locate username, then type, and then we should be able to, then we should be able to go to and. So I think what we want to do is the condition should just be a command, then the then branch should just be a command statement. And of course that makes sense because in a real if statement um, your condition is an expression whereas the thing that you execute in the body of the if statement is 
a statement or a group of statements, right? Usually it's a, a block statement. You do some squiggly brackets and then you do the inside. And in our grammar, command is sort of synonymous with expression. Okay. Sweet. So let's do this as parse command statement. And then that should work. And then it's angry because um, statement no longer implements display because we implemented display for the command statement. So if we go to parser, um, yeah, now we just have to impl display for statements. Full statement for statements. And we'll just say match self right let's don't match aren't it's either a command statement in which case we can simply use the implementation of display for command statement or it's an if statement In which case, um, we'll do the same thing for the if statement, and then we'll implement display for if statement. Um, we could, we could theoretically sort of unwrap it here, but I don't think that's where it belongs. I think we should implement display, and I may move all these um, display implementations to like some other um, module or like down toward the bottom of the file. I do think they clutter things up, um, but for now we're, we're okay. Okay, let's, let's um, implement display for the if statement. So what we want to do is we want to say if and then the condition, and then we want to say then, and then we want to um, do the then branch. Self.condition, self.then branch. Great, okay. Let's see if we're parsing things. Um, so we have our two normal locate statements, and then we have, down here we have um, this error handling statement for if had error, then report error message and refresh and try again. And then we have if locate username, then type test at test.com. So this one is a simple, um, let's do this one first actually. That one's sort of like a simple if statement. And this one is an if statement that continues into a command statement. Let's see if we parse them correctly. If locate username, then type test at test.com. If had error, then report error message and refresh and try again. Worked like a charm. Worked like a charm, y'all. Okay, so we have we have if statements, and they're more powerful, they're they're more meaningful than they were before when we thought they would just de-sugar. Awesome. I don't think that's too I don't think that's too complex. I think that's very straightforward. Okay, um, we need a syntax for variable declaration and instantiation. How are we doing on time? Two hours and 34 minutes. Whew, okay, we're barreling through. Um, let's take a brief pause. I'm gonna pause and then um, Go get a glass of water and then come back. All right, we're back. Got a glass of water. This is my coffee cup from earlier today. As you can see, Eloise has joined me. And let's dive back into it and finish this up. Um, variable declaration and instantiation. So. Right now we have the concept of a um, read command, which is the idea that you can read the text from some web element and save that as a variable. 
But what we don't have is sort of manually setting variables. We don't have a way to say, um, you know, let username equal and then just give a sort of manual string. Um, and I think the way I want to do this, that's, that's my dog peeing in the corner, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Hmm. Okay, I'll deal with that after the video. <laughs> um, I think the way I want to do that is just sort of um, do a declaration. It's going to look like a declaration, but it's actually going to be um, a declaration and an instantiation. So right now, our grammar for a command is that you have... Um, is that you have um, a word for the command and then some input. It's two tokens. And I don't really want to have a command that's like, I don't want people typing var username and equals sign or the word equals and then some text. I think that gets, I think that gets programmery very quickly and it also sort of complicates our grammar. Um, so what I think I want to do instead, I mean, we could do it, but I was thinking we could just do sort of, if you type, if you type some word that's not a command, followed by some, by an input string, um, that becomes a variable. So you could say like, if I just type username, my username at test.com then the username variable is my username at test.com now we, we have other options here we could say set username as my username at test.com we could say save username as my username.com um, I don't know if there's any sort of um, so the uh, the argument here is that um, when you have a special keyword for it um, you can look for it at the beginning of parsing a command um, or at the beginning of parsing a statement. So basically we would have three statement types. We would have the if statement type, the command statement type, and then we would have um, a variable definition statement type. Um, because de it, you know, we, we don't really have a concept of um, declaration as separate from instantiation because we don't have a concept of nil. Um, I think, I don't know where I want to go here. I want to finish up this video, but I don't know where I want to go here. So the, the pro for this is that you can have some sort of keyword at the front. Um, I think the con is that it's the only, it's really the only command that, um, that's four parts. So I like the idea of username, my username, because I think it's just really straight. It's really quick. Um, yeah, you don't have to remember a keyword. You can just sort of put them at the top of a script. I know that looks programmery, but I don't think it looks programmery in a scary way. Let's go with this for now. And the way I want to do it is um, basically if you get to the end of trying to parse a command um, that, and you don't find like one of the command keywords, then what you're essentially saying is actually what I want to do is this thing I just gave you is a variable name and I want to set the input 
to the variable name. Well, I don't know, because then you have this thing where do you want this as part of um, do you want this as part of like a compound sentence? Do you want to say username, my username test.com and locate username, you know, locate and then you give it some locator and type username. Um, like it would be like username, my username test.com and locate, you could say um, like some XPath, right? And type username like that. Um, I guess I'd be fine with that. I think it'd be a weird way to do the script. But the idea is we want to limit the number of weird ways to do the script because we don't want these to end up looking complicated. Don't really want to add two. Like I don't want to add two keywords. Let's go with this for now, and then we'll change it later if we don't like it. Um, okay. So the idea here is we don't actually have to add any tokens. What we want to do is in the parser, when we are parsing a command statement, basically this is a type of command. Um, and so we can have a, um, a set variable command. And a set variable command, oh, you know what? A command is supposed to have a command, a single command parameter. Um, we can do that. We can do that. We'll have a set variable command with a single command parameter. And then command parameter can have set variable, which takes a string for the variable name and a string for what they want to set the variable to. And then uh, we want to display command param. We want that to be the variable name and the string we want to set it to. And we basically want to say as that, right? B as S, right? And then here we want to say set variable with a command param. We want to write set variable and then we'll give it that, right? Um, Maybe that's just how we should do it. Have a third, yeah. I think trying to squeeze this into a command is sort of is sort of foolish because it's not command is synonymous with expression and in other languages um, you can have um, a variable assignment expression, right? Sometimes in a, if you want to say like if x equals 3 instead of equals equals 3, but I think that's almost always a mistake. Um, I think we just want a statement. So let's actually undo all this nonsense. Goodbye. Goodbye command param. Goodbye, set variable command. Okay, so you're all compiling again. I think instead, let's go with some sort of keyword. 
So let's do, ooh. Let's do let's do save. Um, save username as username. Yeah, let's do that. I like that. Um, so in our statements, we have a third kind of statement, which is a variable. Um, let's call this a set variable statement. Right, we don't have um, we don't really have a concept of a variable expression. Instead, um, in each command, we'll sort of look up the variable that gets passed to it as a parameter. It's not like um, a variable is not a thing that's going to evaluate to something. Um, it's just sort of a token that we pass to a command. So let's do set variable with set variable statement. And then let's make a pub struct set variable statement. And a set variable statement is going to have, oh gosh, um, it's going to have a variable name. And that's going to be a string. And then it's going to have a value. And that's going to be a string. OK. Let's add this. And then let's go ahead and fix up the display implementation. So set variable, set variable, set variable, and we'll just display it. Set variable, and then let's impl display for set variable statement. Let's Move this down here. Impl. Great. And then we will write self dot variable name. We'll say set, we'll say save. Ooh, it's getting late, y'all. As that. And then we have the variable name, and then we have self.value. Great. OK, so now we know what it is we want to try and parse, and we can print that. Now we have to try and parse it. Um, so in the parser, We have this, we have parse statement. Parse statement looks for an if, and if it finds that token, then it tries to parse an if statement. Otherwise, it tries to parse a command statement. Let's do an else if. Um, then let's go here. And let's do if we advance on. Sorry about the dog. If we advance on a save token, so we need two more types of tokens. Um, we need a save token, commands, literals, combinators. Let's put this under variable, variable string. Let's have a save token and an as token. And then let's fix everything we just broke, which is that. Save is save. And is anth. Oh, sorry. 
as is as. I hope you've noticed um, as we go through this that refactoring in Rust is just really nice. Uh, you make a change and then you follow the errors until it's fixed and then when you're done it usually works. Um, there, there's just no other language that's like that um, and it's it's great. It's really nice. Um, some people call it um, compiler-driven development, right? Um, you make a change, and the compiler basically tells you what to do until you fixed it. Okay, let's do this. If we advance on a save token, um, I bragged a bit too early there because we need to remember to read these tokens in. Uh, we would have found the error and it would have told us, but if we find save, and actually, it's probably a sign that rather than, um, rather than do this um, match on the Lexeem here, maybe we should, maybe we should implement try from, but anyway, not for now. Let's get the video done. Make a token save, and if we have an as, make a token as. Great. Now let's fix the parsing. Um, so we've, we've advanced on the save token. Now we need to try to, um, we need to get the variable. So let var equal self dot advance on token type token type variable yeah let's do that dot um, okay or um, if we don't get a variable token, then we're in trouble, right? So we need to self.error and say that we expected a variable name, right? Um, and then we need to consume the as token. Let as equal basically all this. Except we'll say token type as, and we expected as, and then, ooh, as is a keyword, as token. There we go. Um, and then we need to try to consume the string value we're setting. Um, we don't really want to support um, updating variable names, set some variable as another variable. Um, I just don't think people are going to use that in scripts that often. So let's say let value equal this. They still have that copied. Um, but we want to advance on a string. Expected some text. Okay, and now we want to return. Okay, this is going to be. Uh, what did we call it? Set variable statement. Um, it's going to be okay. Statement set variable. It's going to be a set variable statement with what are the fields? Variable name and value. Let's call this variable name. 
Um, and then we have to do one more thing, which is that, well, no, for the string, we already stripped the quotes. So we should be good there. So we should be able to simply say variable name and value. Expected string, found stuck token. Ah, so now we need to convert. So let's do this. Control X, match, variable name value. And let's do, um, so the variable name is a token which has a fields on token. Um, it has a token type. Token type. Token type variable with that variable name in it. Yeah, actually, let's do that. Variable name. us the variable name um, and then for value that's going to be a token type string uh, oh, I'm sorry that's going to be a token with some token type string If we get that, then we want to return that. We want to return an OK statement, set variable, blah, blah, blah. Otherwise, um, we want to return an error. And the error here is sort of weird what we want to. Um, Sort of strange trying to figure out what we want to return here because we kind of know, right? We're, we're handling the error here and here. So we kind of know that this error is unreachable. So we'll just say error for now. Um, yeah, let's go with that. Okay, now, excuse me, one moment. Go, you crazy animal. Okay, now let's try setting a variable. Set, or I'm sorry, we called it save. Um, my variable as some string value. Let's see how we did. We got it. We have variables. We have parsed variables. All right. All right, so now all that's left for what we were supposed to do in this video is documentation. And I was gonna take you through Cargo Readme. But since we are at three hours, um, I think I'm gonna stop it here. Um, I will probably do the documentation in Cargo Readme as part of the next video. If I don't do it as part of the next video, then um, I will at least provide some notes saying what we changed. Um, but yeah, 
Now that we've completed a parser, um, in the next video, we should do some light refactoring, um, and then our program comes to life when we start interpreting. I'll see you then.